Hello, it's April from April's Home, and today I thought I would share with you my vintage-inspired Halloween decor. I have switched things up a bit for my fall decor video. You can check that out. I'll go ahead and link that below. I've left the foliage the same, but I have changed the decorations for some of my favorite Halloween items. I love vintage Halloween decor, and so that is what inspired my decor this year. A lot of my pieces are from previous years, and I'll go ahead and share with you some of those items. Here's my mantle, and I've used the same garland that I used last year. I've got my little lit up um, candle here, and then these old-fashioned Halloween children that I got at Hobby Lobby a few years back, and also these crows that I also picked up at Hobby Lobby. I've seen those the last few years, so I'm not sure if they still have them, but um, that is where I got them. These little adorable figurines, the little witch there and ghost and scarecrow came from Target many years ago. I love that they look like a vintage figurine. They are a little bit more modern than some of the other looks, but I think that they fit really well. And then we have here in the center, my beautiful fox. This is a Beswick fox that I recently got. I had this up for my early fall decor as well, but it didn't arrive in time to be in my last video, but I loved it so much that I'm going to keep it out all fall. And he will stay here also when I switch everything to my Thanksgiving decor, but he's absolutely beautiful. I love foxes and I think he fits in really nice with all of the fall and Halloween decor. And then on this side, we have another Halloween dressed up figurine here. So very vintage and cute and I just love that. That's my um, mantle above my fireplace. And then down here uh, with all of the toys for my grandchildren, I have a basket with some fun books. Of course, this is the Amazon catalog, the toy catalog. That's not really for fall, but my grandson really loves looking at it with me. I've got some fun board books, Apples and Pumpkins, and Tasha Tudor's Pumpkin Moonshine, one of our favorites. Jane Foster's Halloween board book is really cute. Biscuits, Halloween, and Room on the Broom. Got some other ones in here too, Berenstain Bears, Peanuts, The Five Little Pumpkins, some books for me to look through, this one about popcorn, and then I've got um, my Thanksgiving books in here as well. Some of them anyway, Thanksgiving in the Woods, Pumpkin Soup, so just some fun fall reading. These little containers contain half penny dolls. I bought these years ago from Hearth Song, so they're just little teeny tiny dolls like this little ghosty and a little cute witch and other various little creatures. This one too is full of all these fun little creatures, Halloween creatures. There's a little black cat, things like that. So just some fun little toys for my grandkids to play with as well as some fun books to read in this really pretty basket. And then here is my TV area here. I've left it largely the same on the TV. You can see one of the, um, fall themed rooms that you can put on from YouTube. It's just a beautiful ambience that plays a little nice music and has this fall image on it. You can um, search those on YouTube. They have a bunch of really beautiful choices. I've been enjoying that this season. Got my little needle felted candy corn that I made years ago and some of the similar foliage that I had out for the early fall and a little witch doll that I made years ago with a little embroidery and a cape here that I made. Just one of those little wire dolls. I enjoy doing that for crafting sometimes. Thought she looked cute here next to our harvest house. Up here this is also largely the same as it was in the fall. I finally found some good candy for this little horse and cart. I was going to put candy corn in it but then I found this here, the Wiley Wallaby. This is the brand of licorice that I buy and this is candy corn licorice. It really doesn't taste much like licorice at all. It really tastes almost like vanilla marshmallow filling. They're absolutely wonderful. If you can find these and you like that sort of sweet vanilla-y taste with a hint of candy corn taste, they're really yummy. So that is what I chose to put in there. It was the perfect size for that. Then I brought out my little teeny tiny cherished teddy that I've had for so many years. It's from 2001 actually. So my cute little bear there and he fits in with all of this vintage decor very nicely. I've left the side tables the same with my little lantern. It lights up and is glittery and pretty and my grandchildren really like that as well. And I left my pumpkin here 
also looked really pretty and the um, lace doily gives it that vintage look. On my little bookcase in the living room here, I've left it largely the same as the fall, except for I've added a bunch of pumpkins as well as a little puppy dressed up as a ghost. It looks a lot like my dog Percy. And there he has his little um, pumpkin trick-or-treat bucket that used to fit in his mouth. It keeps falling out, so I need to glue that, but I thought it looked cute sitting next to him. And here on either side are my vintage fox figurines and my owl there, a little hedgehog, and of course pumpkins. This little cute print that I purchased years ago from a local artist, and another little owl and a pumpkin. So just some little harvest things decorating my bookshelf there. And then over here on my lamp table, I've put out this cute little ghost that I got years ago at Target. I loved how he looked crafted and old fashioned. And then out in my dining room for the center of my table, which will be filled with Halloween treats on Halloween, all of my appetizers and charcuterie and different candy treats and things like that, I wanted to make a special centerpiece. So this is my decoupage pumpkin covered in really beautiful vintage ephemera. And I will go ahead now and share with you how I made this. Today I thought I would share with you a fun craft that I'm making today. I'm doing some decoupage on this fun paper mache pumpkin that I found at Hobby Lobby here. I haven't done decoupage in quite some time, so I'm really excited to um, get back into that a little bit. So again, I got this pumpkin, this paper mache pumpkin at Hobby Lobby, and I've got some Mod Podge here as well as a brush and some little scissors here to cut out my pictures. Let me go ahead and share with you some of the books that I'll be using here. I picked up a couple of um, vintage Halloween ephemera books. Um, they're used for making junk journals and decoupage and things like that. And I will go ahead and link both of them down in the description box below. This one is the vintage Halloween ephemera book. And these are just fun books with lots of little pictures. It looks like it's got some uh, scrapbook papers in it that you can cut out of and use for both journaling and crafting. This one came a little bit bent up, but since I'm using it to cut apart, I thought that that was okay. But you can see lots of really beautiful um, papers here, fall papers. Those have owls in it and then back in the back of this one, this one had a little bit more scrapbook paper in it than I thought it would, but still some fun prints in there. And then in the back has really cute vintage Halloween cards and things like that that you can cut out. These would be great for journaling. And in this case, I'm going to pick out some and glue them onto my pumpkin. I'm going to do a um, vintage inspired pumpkin. You can see all these fun journaling pages that I'll have to use for other projects like scrapbooking or journal making. Otherwise you can just cut out any of these if you don't want to use them as the tags. You can use the images. There's some more cute little things to cut out. And labels. Little words that you can cut out and use. I might pick a few of those. And then um, this next one here is my favorite one. This was called Halloween Vintage Ephemera Collection. This had a lot more of the uh, vintage images in it rather than just scrapbook paper. You can see some cute little pictures there. I love the ones that aren't too scary and just like sweet, like uh, cute ones like this. These girls, old fashioned girls bobbing for apples. Here's some more. Really cute, the little cat there and the moon. I've always been drawn to these vintage images for all of the different holidays. So it was fun to find a book that had so many of these pictures to cut out. And I'm definitely going to um, look at some of this same company's other holiday books for other seasonal crafting. So you can see lots of super cute pictures in this one to cut out and use in this craft here. Lots of little round ones to cut out. That'll be a nice size. Some bigger round ones. Tags. This one is definitely uh, my favorite of the two. There are a lot to choose from on um, Amazon. It's just some cute vintage images in the back of all the paper 
um, is printed as well. Just in case you don't like the pictures on one side, you might use the scrapbook paper and some other various fun little Halloween images. I've also picked up just a few um, individual sheets of harvesty papers here, some wood print and plaid print and pumpkin print just in case I need that to fill in some of the spaces. So I'm gonna start by picking out some images and papers that I'd like to use on the pumpkin here. I'm gonna cut out a selection of them with my scissors here, and then I will start um, gluing them onto my pumpkin. With the Mod Podge, I usually add a layer first, put the image down, and then put a layer of Mod Podge over that. This is a matte Mod Podge, but when I'm all done with the final layer, I think I will add a glossy layer to the outside, so it's a little bit more um, shiny uh, with its final layer. So I'm gonna go ahead and get some images picked out and cut out, and I'll come back and share with you um, what images I chose, as well as how I um, go ahead and put them on the pumpkin here. Okay, so I've gone through both of the books and picked out a bunch of fun, vintage images here. I mostly tried to choose really sweet images, nothing too spooky. Um, this year with the young grandchildren, I just wanna keep everything pretty pleasant and sweet and happy. So lots of really cute images here. I'm excited to get started on this. I'm gonna go ahead now and cut them out a little bit further, trim them up nicely, and then I'm gonna start gluing them down. I'm also gonna play around with background paper a little bit too to see if I want to put anything under them or in the background a little bit. So I'm gonna work on this a little bit more and then I'll get started decorating my pumpkin. So I have trimmed up all of my pieces. Some of them I've used a deckle edge here with my um, deckle scissors. And others I just did a nice straight trim on them. And on some, of course, I cut around and around some of the images. These are um, my new decoupage scissors, which I will also link below. I found these at Amazon and they work really wonderfully. They're very precise and they're nice and sharp. So they cut really well and really accurately. So those are very nice um, scissors to have for decoupage. So now I've got a little plate and my Mod Podge and I'm going to get started placing some of the pieces onto my pumpkin and we'll see how that goes and I'll um, come back and show you how it looks as uh, it progresses. I'm making pretty good progress on this so far. You can see what I've done here and of course what I do is I lay down a little bit of glue first with my sponge and then I put glue on the back of whatever picture. Uh, like I would put glue on the back of this and then glue it down and then paint over it with the glue. Um, but what I've decided to do, because I keep having trouble where they're not matching up quite correctly because of the roundness of the pumpkin, so I keep patching in little pieces. So I think before I do much more, I'm going to lay down some bigger pieces of the um, different pattern scrapbook papers I have from this uh, book here. And I'm gonna lay those down so that then I can lay the pictures on and not have to worry so much about piecing in little things in between there. I think that'll make the process go just a little bit quicker, but it's coming along nicely. And this is a really fun craft. I enjoy doing this. It's a very, it's a little bit tedious, but in a, just a nice relaxing way. Um, and I've got a fun, uh, cozy mystery book on tape on Audible playing in the background so that I can listen to my book and work on my little craft here. It's coming along nicely here. I've decided to do the scrapbook paper all around first before putting any more of the vintage images on and that's really going nicely. I think it'll fill in a little bit easier that way. And next I will be working on the bottom half. I'm gonna let the top dry a little bit more before I work on the bottom half. So I've covered the whole bottom now. The whole pumpkin is covered in a layer of the scrapbooking paper. I've just kind of done it a patchwork style here and now I'm ready to add the rest of my decoupage pieces. So I have completely covered the pumpkin here and I've got the first coat of the glossy finish on the bottom here. You can see it's significantly more shiny than the top here, which is a little bit more matte. Um, I had to let the bottom half dry overnight so that it could dry upside down. I had it propped on something so that the whole bottom would dry. And now I'm going to use the glossy Mod Podge on the top half of this pumpkin here and let that dry for um, probably the rest of the day. I have ordered a clear acrylic um, sealer spray from Mod Podge as well. The instructions on the back of this glossy Mod Podge suggest that if you didn't want it tacky to go ahead and spray it with the sealer. It doesn't currently feel at all um, tacky or anything like that, but just to make sure that I preserve it for a while, 
I'm going to go ahead and do that. So now I'm going to go ahead and put the top layer of the gloss coating on and then I'll let that dry and I'll show you how it turns out. So that is how my decoupage pumpkin turned out. I'm really happy with it. I love all the pictures on it. I think it's so interesting to look at and I think it will make a really wonderful um, centerpiece for my Halloween table for years to come. So that was a really fun project. I hope you enjoyed taking a look at how I made that. This is the sealer that I will be spraying on top of this uh, decoupaged pumpkin to keep it nice and sealed and help it to last. And in the dining room here, on my bookcase. I didn't add too many Halloween items in the dining room this year. Just a few of my fun, whimsical figurines that have sort of an old-fashioned feel even though they are modern. Also some pictures from my uh, Randy Lynn Reed Patreon and some pumpkins. These are not really old-fashioned. These are modern little animated globes but my grandchildren really love them. They light up and sing and blow around bats. And on this one here, they blow around little fall leaves. So very, very cute. My grandkids really get a kick out of those. So that is the bookcase in my dining room. And on top of this bookcase here, in the fall, I put out the um, mustard yellow pumpkins with the bark leaf shapes there and the um, faux blackberries. And for Halloween, I've added these adorable little candy corn figurines. And I absolutely love them. They have sort of a, uh, sort of more like a 50s vibe to them, but they still work in with my vintage decor. I think that they look really cute. And lastly, for my foyer entry here, these are my um, children's picture book bookshelves here. And I decorated them for Halloween with some vintage figurines. So the look of vintage anyways. I found this absolutely adorable black cat book. It is a board book and it fit perfectly with all of my other black cat figurines. So that's what's on that shelf. And on this shelf here I've kept out a lot of fall foliage as well as um, things that I picked up on different walks in the woods around here. There is my um, pumpkin scarecrow that I love to put out every year. I love that he wears glasses. I think it's so cute. My little fox that I've kept out since autumn. And I've added a little ghost and a witch figure here. My scarecrows are still out. And then up here I've added two more vintage inspired little figurines, a cat and a pumpkin person. So that is my vintage inspired Halloween home decor tour as well as my vintage decoupage pumpkin craft that I had a lot of fun making. Thank you so much for watching and I'll talk to you later. Goodbye.